Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a pen from Delike. It is the Bra uh, well metal, black metal pocket pen 2020. Uh, now this pen was uh, sent to me or ordered for me by a viewer who uh, loved this pen and another pen which will be reviewed in a couple of weeks uh, and wanted me to do reviews of them. Uh, so thank you so much, you know who you are, uh, and thank you for your generosity and for your support of my channel. Let's look at this pen. So, as I said, this is the Delight Black Metal Pocket Pen, uh, and this comes in a range of different finishes. There's like a couple of brass ones as well with different sort of knurling patterns or straight patterns on them or no pattern for that matter, uh, and it's a cool little pen. Now it is a small pen, as you know, it is a pocket pen, so it fits nicely sort of in the palm of the hand and all of those sorts of things, and it's robust, so, you know, it can go in your pocket and, you know, be thrown around, all that sort of stuff. I've been carrying this one for, um, well, it's been in my pocket for about a week, and I've been using it for a couple of weeks, and there's only really like a couple of like little chips and stuff on the threads, uh, so it's standing up pretty well. Um, it's a lacquered uh, anodized brass material. Um, if we look inside um, the cap, we can sort of get a glimpse of the brass in there uh, if, when the light gets it right. The same is in the barrel there as well. It's a screw pen, as you can see, and uh, it's one, two, three, three turns, which for a pocket pen is a few screws really I think like the advantage of pocket pens is that they are uh, you know fairly quick draw uh, you know um, screw is I think the best method for them because it's a bit more secure but uh, three screws is quite a lot three turns uh, but the threads are nice they're you know well machined and all of that sort of stuff as I said it's got great build quality and uh, yeah nice design uh, this is the food a nib uh, it's just a steel nib, a small steel nib, food day there, you can see it's sort of turned up on the end there. This comes uh, in extra fine, fine and the food day, and this is uh, what is labelled as a 0.6mm food day nib. So it's kind of like a medium, you know, ish food day nib, it's, it's a, and the food day nib is designed to write uh, a different width depending on the angle at which you write, and I'll show you that uh, when I do the writing sample. It is a standard cartridge converter pen. Um, it comes with a converter, and I think it could take standard cartridges. It would not take a long cartridge or a long converter. Uh, it's just got a simple sort of uh, push-pull converter that comes with it, uh, which works nicely. And uh, it's had a couple of refills, and that's good. Uh, okay, so, as I said, you know, cartridge converter. Simple Fruit nib, nice build quality, and really reasonably priced. So this pen retails for around 15 US dollars. So pretty decent. Let's now just do a quick a rundown of the pen from the top and then uh, show some, uh, you know, comparisons and stuff. Okay, so on the top is uh, this sort of smooth matte uh, finial. Uh, it's nice. There's no clip on the pen, so it does roll around quite easily. Um, uh, you know, so something to be aware of. But nice sort of smooth, you know, cap. And then the cylindrical knurled, you know, cap. Little step down onto the barrel, which is also knurled and cylindrical, and then you get the threads for posting, and then a relatively smooth, just with machine mark, uh, end cap there. That said, screws. Then it reveals the section, which is plastic and hourglass shaped. Um, the issue with this is that it's plastic on metal threads into the body. Uh, so if that's something you don't enjoy or that you don't trust, just be aware that that is the case. And it's got a simple plastic bead there. The step down off the barrel is minimal. It's not a huge step down and the threads are relatively smooth. The only issue is that uh, when you are holding the pen, if you are holding it back on those threads, you do feel that step down. It's not sharp, but it is an edge. You screw the pen to post and it becomes a nice size in the hand. Uh, good weight. Uh, it's a pretty heavy pen for a pocket pen. Uh, it does sit on the webbing of your hand and it depends where you hold it as to where that cap sits and there'll be a little bit more about that in just a second. Okay, here are some comparisons. First is a standard fountain pen. This is the Lamy Safari, one of the 2021 editions. This is the Savannah Green, uh, harkening back, of course, to the original release in 1980. 
uh, 81, whatever it was. Uh, and then, so that's, you know, a standard length fountain pen. Uh, we've got the Sean Design Pocket 6, which uses the number 6 nib, which is nice in comparison to the Delike. Uh, but once again, one of those sort of clean, straight barrel pens that screws to post. And then, of course, a stock standard uh, pocket pen, the Kaweco Sport. So in terms of size, it's just a little longer than the, the Kaweco and considerably longer than the Pocket 6, but obviously much smaller than the Safari. Let's look at it now uh, with posted comparisons. So now we see the pens posted, you'll see that it is considerably shorter still than the Lamy Safari, but it stands up very nicely alongside the Kaweco and the Sean Design. Good length pen. Um, the weight of this pen is different to the others though. It is much more back weighted and it's a much heavier pen of course than say the plastic uh, Kaweco Sport. I just want to show it now just uh, there next to the Lamy Safari in a standard way that people write with the Lamy Safari, which is uh, uncapped. And if you put it uncapped next to the Safari, it's actually just a tiny bit longer. So it's a nice sort of size in the hand, but much heavier, of course, than the Safari. Okay, let's talk about the specs of this pen. So, post uh, capped, sorry, it's 106 millimeters. So, you know, a small-ish pen. Uncapped, it is 96 millimeters. So, like, too small to really use they're uh, uncapped. Um, you could probably like tick a couple of things off a to-do list or write a couple of things very quickly. Um, but the optimum length for this pen for writing, particularly for longer writing sessions, is posted uh, and where it comes out at 139 millimeters, which is a pretty decent length. The section is narrow. At its center point there, it is nine millimeters. So it is a smaller section, and also the length of the section is fairly short, which gives you the, the, uh, the strong feeling to actually hold this pen slightly further back on the threads. The pen is 38 grams in total, 27 in the body and 11 in the cap. So when you do post it, it does wipe back weigh the pen ever so slightly. And a big reason for this uh, is the plastic section. With all this metal in the top and you know in the barrel of the pen and then the section itself being plastic i prefer my pens to be balanced with the weight leading down to the nib and unfortunately this one is just back weighted ever so slightly here i have some clefontaine 90 gram paper and we have the do you like The black metal pocket fountain pen. As I said, this has what is labelled as a 0.6 millimeter Fude nib. And the ink here today is Colorverse. Uh, I think it's called Delicious Sleep. Okay, so yes, this is a smooth nib. And you know what? Not super dry. This isn't the wettest ink going around, uh, but you can see this pen keeps up very, very nicely. With fast writing, like totally illegible, that was me lifting the pen off the page, but no start, start or you know, hard start issues or anything at all. Very, very good. Um, the it is not a flex nib. It is hard. You do not get line variation from this nib in that way. Not a flex nib. Reverse writing possible. Very very uh, fine. What writing under its own weight, it actually does very very nicely. And I think part of that is the nature of the Fude nib. It's got a nice sort of place like a nice you know contact point with the page. Now about this Fude nib. The idea being that if you hold the pen very upright, you get a very fine line. And then of course, when you hold it with that nib flat on the grip, on the paper, you get a much broader line. What that allows you is different line widths. And also for, you know, traditionally for uh, Asian character writing, it responds in a similar way uh, to a brush, hence Fude nib. But you can see this nib lays down a lovely line. It is 
generous, it is smooth, there's very little feedback, and uh, it just performs really nicely. So, in my book, that is a really big pro for this pen. Speaking of pros, let's now cover some pros and cons. So, what are my pros and cons for the uh, Delight Brass, well, metal, pocket pen? Well, let's start with the cons. There's a couple. Firstly, this material will get banged up. You can see it on the threads already, and over time, you know, banging against keys and things in your pocket, you will pick up little chips in the finish, just the nature of the beast. But also, part of having a pocket pen, and I think personally, part of the personality of a pocket pen. A couple of other issues are the balance issue. Now, because of that plastic section and all the weight being back here, now there's weight in this section of the barrel, clearly because it's the end cap and where the threads are, there's weight in the cap, 11 grams, a third of the pen's weight in the cap, um, almost a third. Uh, so when the a lot when the, the the smallest part of the weight is down in the fingers and uh, in the nib. You feel the balance of this pen is slightly back weighted. As I said, my preference is to have uh, pens where the weight is led down towards the nib. It just gives you less chance of feeling like you're having to pinch and hold the pen down. It does a lot more of the work for you. The other issue with this pen is a couple of like sharp-ish edges. So the threads there, that where that uh, barrel meets the threads, that is a little sharp. And so you definitely feel that under your fingers, particularly if you hold the pen slightly further back to get a nice distance from the end of the nib onto the page. The other sharp edge is the edge of the cap here. If you're holding it there, you do feel that rubbing on your hands. Now for a short writing session, not gonna be a problem. But if you decide to use this for a long writing session, which you know you might want to with such a nice nib, you are gonna to start to feel that unfortunately. Also do feel the texture of the pen, and if you're a tactile person, this may not be the pen for you. Pros of this pen though, the nib, as I said, it writes beautifully, it's smooth, it's elegant, it's got a nice sort of interesting shape on the page, even in everyday handwriting. Like if we just look at that sample again, um, the shape of the writing, you get little bits of like line variation, um, which is nice. It's, you know, not my neatest handwriting, of course, but uh, you know, you definitely get a, a nice sense of, you know, that Fude nib. It is a small Fude, not a large Fude, uh, obviously, but, uh, Still that sort of same brush sort of nature to it. Uh, the design of this pen, I like. I like the shape, I like the look. Uh, I love that black matte finish, uh, or the black sort of stealth finish, all black, black nib, black section, black pen. Uh, it, I like it, I really like it a lot. And going along with that, I really love the build quality. I think it's sturdy, it's robust. The only issue being the plastic of the section leading into the metal threads on the barrel but that's fine. The converter, push-pull converter, very basic, not everyone's favorite, but does the job. Happy with that. But what I'm most happy about this pen is the price at 15 US. So I think this one to come to Australia was something like 22, 23 Australian dollars. Um, really, really reasonable. When you think that that's roughly the same price as a, it's actually cheaper, much cheaper than a plastic Kaweco Sport, and you're getting a metal pen that has a converter and all of that sort of stuff, it's a pretty good deal. Other metal uh, pocket pens, something like the Traveller's Company Brass Pocket Pen, in Australia retails for over $100. The Sean Design is over a, well over $100. Uh, there are a number of these sort of small minimalist, minimalist metal pens, and this is one of the best priced ones. And there's a number of these to like little brass and metal pocket pens uh, in this sort of price range with slightly different designs, ones that you know uh, mimic something like the uh, Kaweco Supra or Lilliput, as well as you know sort of other you know well-known or lesser-known metal pocket pens. So jump on you know eBay or places like that and just see what is around. But for me, this is actually a pretty nice pen. I'm not a huge fan of some of those sharp edges. I'm not a huge fan of the bounce, but it is a pen I will use. It is a pen I will, uh, you know, use for its purpose of being a pocket pen. Chuck it in your pocket, it's robust, it's strong, it's gonna be there. Uh, and with that interesting, nice little food I need, I think it's a really interesting and very cool option. So th this was the Delike Black Metal pocket pen or brass pocket pen from 2020 uh, with a 0.6 millimeter food a nib i hope you found this video interesting and useful if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that i produce please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below 
You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here. Uh, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, please get in touch. Uh, if there's a way you'd like to support the channel, like this very generous uh, viewer did, by providing items for a review or sponsoring your review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.